Mathematics entertain the truth history. Copy off. Because the young generation are followers. The, like the leaders are the older generation. This young generation, they're a bunch of followers. Right. Well, but, no. but we got a lot of legendary people here that you could have took after. You know, why would you choose to take after a, another genre of music from another state? Nah. You know what I'm I, saying? Here's my thing with it, right? So, like, I'm like 26, right? But, like, I was raised by niggas like 35, 40, 50, right? Now, right. I make my music. I make my music of lyricism balls but i still like i'm still 26 so i still i still resonate with this generation think about it, think about it right now is that with the whole drill scene and i'm look, i'm looking at niggas my age and like younger than me and i'm like wait hold on like yo bro like y'all y'all supposed to be supposed to be raised by 50 and all of them niggas but y'all still y'all still lost your identity and i feel like basically with that being said it's more it more falls on the niggas who wasn't raised who wasn't raised by niggas 35, 40, 45, who was just raised by the TV. That, that's that's in New York, you get what I'm saying? Because I'm literally, like I said, I was outside. Of course, like I was in, I was in, I was in, I wasn't causing no trouble, but I was still outside. Now the niggas that was raised by the TV, what you think, what you think they were looking at? They was looking at, they was looking at niggas from the South. So when they, when they, when they become 15, 16, 17, like, like the nigga pop, right? I don't know if y'all seen a video, but some guy smacked. Niggas took off his beads, right? Mm, all, okay. all, that all of a sudden now, son is son is the big low. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Right. That, that's that's a that's a, that's a contrast, bro. So where you where you getting all this tough shit from? So you gotta draw you gotta draw from something. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion. right, right, right. Mm. Yeah, that's crazy. Pop, you talking about pop from pop um, smoke? Pop smoke, yeah. Pop smoke, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's just like, yo, bro. Like, if you wasn't, if you wasn't raised, if you wasn't really outside, or you wasn't raised by niggas older, ten years, fifteen years older, you learn from TV, bro. And then at the same time, you get a record contract. You literally, you literally trying to become what you, what you wasn't when you, when you was a little nigga. That's right. how I look. And then you know the the labels, they also groom these dudes. You know, you seen you seen Malibu's Most Wanted. You see C before. You know they they give these dudes the hip hop look. They tell them how to act. They tell them how to move. Everything. You know, and these dudes is young, so they gonna gravitate to that. Remember, there's money on there's money on the table. So they like yo for the money. They ready to do it. You know, they 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 all in. They all in for the money. You know. And my thing, my a lot of a lot of a, a lot of the drill dudes is from is from like the poorest parts of New York. You know what I mean? So they ready to do whatever for the money. Right. And my thing, bro, with it, it's like, yo, like I told, I told my niggas this too. Like, like niggas know me on terms of like, just niggas just know my face, niggas know my name. So I would never come out and I pop as big as this nigga. And I'm talking about, yo, I'm big, I'm big homie, I'm big low. Nah, my nigga, niggas know me from my block, and that's what that's what I'm representing. I'm I'm I'm, I'm in this shit to rap. I'm not in this shit to be no gangster because I was even the gangster in the streets. So I'm about to I'm about to get a million dollars. And start living that life, nah, bro. I gotta come back to Queens, bro. You feel know what I'm saying? That's but a fact. Yeah, niggas, niggas don't know these niggas. So of course you could, you could pop all this shit talking about, yeah, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a demon. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's just, right. it's different for a nigga my age. Right. And then when you yeah. just like you said, when you outside, you know, when you outside, it's a whole different thing. People really know you, opposed to somebody just in the household. They now they become a rapper. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of these rappers is is pussy. They ain't never lived that life, and they living that life now that they got money. A lot right. of these niggas couldn't even get pussy until they got money. That's why you see so many rappers making dumb moves with these females because they don't know how to move with females because they never had a female it's until all they new got to that. that money. Yeah. The whole lifestyle is all new to them. Yeah, and you know, I hate to say it, but when you don't get girls before you get money, you gonna be e you gonna be an easy target for women. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. Right, and then even deeper than that, I don't know if y'all seen. I don't know. If, I don't know if y'all seen um Troyes Troyes interview. The nigga was talking about um he was like, "Yo, bro, I was already in the streets, my nigga. So I'm about to get in the industry and promote a lifestyle like." Same shit I was saying, bro. Like I already caused enough trouble, my nigga. So I'm about to come in this shit. And just lose my opportunity. 
I don't know if y'all seen that shit. Like, I think let me so. Tell, yo, Big Twin. I think it was with Gods of the City. Hey, yo, Big Twin. Yo. Let me tell you what don't get celebrated. You know, like some of the, you know, it's, I know a lot of successful bloods that's working in transit. You know, they was in the street moving, but they, they, right. they was moving swift to the point where they ain't catch no charge, where they were able to think and say, fuck that, I'm going to change my life and stop banging like this so I can have a life. Those bloods never get celebrated. You only you only see the ones that did all the fuck shit and did the jail time getting celebrated. You don't That's see none of the ones that changed their life and got up and, and was able to move better than the ones that got caught up by the system. Those are the ones that don't get celebrated. Only the ones that got caught up by the system stories get told. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Because how many bloods you know up in New York never got caught up, never got jammed up, and they and they live in successful lives right now, and you like why this nigga ain't telling his story? Right, 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 right. right. You know, they only celebrate like, the dudes that the dudes that got that cut, cut. You know what I mean? Yep. The dudes that made it hot. You, you know, yep. the dudes was in a box. You know, you know, you know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. be like, damn, you know, the but dumb you know, ones. Yeah, you know what's fucked up is that TV promotes <laughs> promotes the shit, so that's why you know. And they don't understand. They just, they just like making it worse, you know, because niggas would be like, fuck that. I want to live that life. Like one thing AZ said when he did that interview, I caught, he said, um, he didn't, he wasn't making a movie for people to, um, say no snitches and all that bullshit that they put in there about him. He was like, I was making a movie so people won't make the same mistakes, but the way they spent it, he's like, they spent it like it was cool to be a drug dealer. Right, but his his the thing with it, bro, is that I gotta I gotta put some blame on y'all niggas that that was that was born in the eighties, raised in the nineties. You feel what I'm saying? Because, yeah, right. But some of them, some of them niggas was still was still was still pushing that life, and they wasn't like that as well. So, so what you what you think what you think for a nigga born in the nineties? Raised in the in the early two thousands, about to look at it. You feel what I'm saying? So y'all niggas still gotta take some blame. Yeah, right. but it's, but majority, accountability. majority of us, accountability. Yeah, yeah, but the majority of us, yeah. But... Jay, I think you went out. Your sound. Y'all good on the sound? Can you hear me? There y'all go. Yeah, there you go. No, I was saying that some some of us do take accountability for some of the shit that happened. But like me, I I, I already know the problem that you know that was that was going on with with people that was coming up in my generation. There was a lot of dudes that were so materialistic. That they didn't care if they had to go rob and still to get it. And to then, get it. Yeah, to get it. You know, I, I, I grew up seeing my brother, you know, get mad at my mom's because she couldn't afford a pair of Jordans and or a North Face. So he he'd get up with my friends and try to go rob a Chinese restaurant or try to go rob somebody on the train with a North Face. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I seen this shit growing up and shit. And I think like you know where where we went wrong is that, you know we didn't we didn't try to teach the young generation that none of this materialistic shit is worth it. We taught them to, to worship this shit, and this is why you see generations and generations pr pr promoting the same shit. Right, right. I like I say this right. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas taught the niggas who was listening, niggas like myself and other niggas. But like I said again, as and as an artist too. We not the ones being pushed. You feel what I'm saying? It's the niggas that was raised by the TV. It was the niggas that was the outside. You feel what I'm saying? That's that's literally that's literally getting the shine right now. So even back to your topic, bro, uh, why niggas is copying off of the off of the shine rag movement? They got no base. They got no base. Yeah, like, yeah. The game you win today, man, it's kind of hard because if you don't become a rapper at an early young age, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be able to do it later on. And that's something that back in my days, 
if you were still in your 30s, you could still pop. But nowadays, if you pass 25, you might as well hang that rap shit up, you know? <laughs> and, like, it's true, though, right, Big Twain? Um, see, you know, it's all in how you coming with it. Look I think, at Jay-Z. Like, the message Jay-Z you, you made put it down there 30. Jay-Z ain't popped to damn near 30. Yeah, yeah, you know. I guess and, it's how you pushing the message, you know, what, what message you pushing, right? Yeah, how do we, we should be talking about how do we get rap back to the way it was where we talking about, even if we talking about getting money, but we not talking about orphan the next nigga or talking about a nigga that we killed and snitching on ourselves. Because these days there's a lot of dry snitches in, in, in these lyrics, you know, and all it's doing is p- promoting more black on black crime. Instead of, you know, people just being on a purpose, getting a bread. You know, that's what we were talking about back in the day. We talked about just getting bread. Bread and then, right, right. then the bitches. We, we wasn't talking about tricking money away and all that bullshit we had now in the music. And I think, you know, 50 Cent actually um, threw New York rap in the ground. You know, when he came out, he, he, he made a, a big bag off of it and he destroyed it. But nobody wanna nobody wanna look at that and call Fifty Cent is responsible for the for the rap for the rap industry in New York being dead. Nah, nah, he, bro, I can't I can't see that because like yes, Fifty did hand it over. Nah, 50 let me did hand it over. Let me say it like this. Let me say it like this, right? Fifty came in, Fifty came into a broken system. So I like I read this nigga book. I don't know if y'all read it. Fifty came into a broken system, right? So the nigga was basically saying like, yo, bro. I'm a coming and shit, and I'm literally about to propel. Now, I look at it as like, yo, damn, bro, you could at least help the culture out. But, like, here's the thing with it, right? Is that the music the music industry was dead from the 90s. You brought up AZ. From from the time, from the time, like, 89, 90, 91, niggas should have stopped pushing that gang shit and should have stuck on the, on, the, on the route public enemy was going. Now, I don't mean right, to take it. Right. I don't mean to take it off a topic, but from 91, 92, the music industry was dead. So the only thing 50 Cent did was like, yo, I'm going to get this bag and I'm going to literally propel myself to do business. What's which, which the niggas doing right now? Think about it. From everybody in 50 Cent's era, who's the most successful right now? 50. 50. Fact. But there was a lot of rappers with 50 yo. Cent did was made itself the only one. He Wait, didn't make on, room on. for other niggas to shine with him. He was worried about taking everybody out to the point where it will be no more New York rap. And now you got this rap you got today. So how can you not hold a man responsible that literally was taking everybody out in New York? Hey, yo, yo, man, he, was playing chess the whole time. he was playing chess the whole time. He's strategic. He strategic came up with the 50 laws of power with Robert Greene, 48 laws writer. You know, he's strategic. 50 was strategic with every move he ever made in the business. Bro. You know? Bro, he did he did everything a Queens a Queens nigga would do. Just like LL. Just like <laughs> just like yo, you feel with him? Just like Nikki. He did everything a Queens nigga would do. Play check it. Yeah, but LL left some meat on the bone. 50 cent script the bone. Uh, mm. All right, wait, wait, wait. Yo, y'all really think we copied off Chirac music? Y'all serious? Everything copied yeah, off of Chirac niggas, music. Niggas right. never copied off Chirac though. But see, you had the drill, right? You call it um, we we called it the, the drill in Chirac, right? We called it drill. But now we got Brooklyn drill, right? Now we got Bronx drill. But it all no. originated out there in Chirac, right? But no, yeah. like, uh, our drill is a whole different type of drill, my like, nigga. Got, yeah, but it's been birthed. It's been birthed from y'all. Our drill came from the UK. It's been birthed from Chicago. Our drill came from the UK. We got locked in with them UK niggas, and they, that's how that shit all originated. You feel me? Like, mm. Our drill. So what you saying is really the Chirac dudes got locked in with the drill from UK. No, y'all niggas never called that shit drill rap, you feel me? Other niggas started calling y'all shit drill rap. UK niggas actually called it drill rap, you feel me? And that's okay. how that shit became. Yeah but, yeah, but Drake ain't getting nobody killed. I mean, I don't really know that nigga, you feel me? Who is right, so, the name he said? Bro, let me he said, the Drake. name drill is from UK, you saying? Uh, New York drill came from the UK, yes. Right, right, right. But 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 we, but you see the thing is you leaving out Chirac so Chirac it came from UK also right? 
But New York, no. but listen, like if you listen rap, to a drill, drill New York, UK. if you listen to a drill New York and you listen to drill Chirac, it's two different type of musics. You feel me? Okay, okay. Like even if you go back to the old Chief Keep days, you feel me? It was never that type of. It was never. We never had to copy our style. You feel me? It just they just called it drill rap. You feel me for the area type shit. So okay, so Bobby Smurda and them. They never, you know, that's not who they was fans of when they first came out. They wasn't fans of I like. Mean, I'm pretty I was sure they. Them. I'm pretty sure they recognized them. Yeah, them niggas. You feel me? They. Yeah, but. Yo, I'm trying to get down to the bottom of this. You know. <laughs> no, yeah, bro. Uh, put it like this. Put it like this, right? When when Chief when Chief Key came out, right? Every nigga in New York was jacking was jacking Chief Keith, was jacking the slang was jacking all that shit from from Chicago. Two years right, later, right, right. Two years later, Schmurda came out. Schmurda, Schmurda just had the city on lock. That's how you get niggas like Pop Five Yo because they was like, wait, hold on, y'all niggas is really making noise in Brooklyn. And after that, niggas just started copying from there. But like, let's, let's keep it a buck. When Chief Keith came out, everybody was jacking lingos from Chicago, bro. That's a fact, bro. Unless, yeah, unless, man. unless you, you were, you were, um, you were, um, young nigga that that can't remember. I remember clearly, bro. I was in high school, bro. All the young niggas was jacking, jacking Chicago lingo, bro. But now niggas, but now niggas is jacking OPT because we really got the shitty on Smash right now. Ooh. So I mean, but but see here in New York, we never talked about right. We never said we smoking on this person and that. But that's all from out there. That's right. all they lingo. Right, right, right. So we, you know, we are we are piggybacking off of something that that. They started, you know what I mean? But they didn't originally start it. Drill really started in UK though. Like all drill rap started. But in drill, UK. yeah, we yeah, we clear, we clear. Um drill, okay, so drill started in UK. Drill is from UK. Yeah. Yeah, all that drill rap and shit, that shit from UK. Yeah. But, right. uh, but, but uh I don't know, like like you gotta you gotta feel the type of music it is, you feel me? Like Chicago drill is different from New York drill. And, like we using the same slang and shit. But the type of beats and shit, completely different. You heard too. The beats is different. Right, right, right. I mean, but what you think about it though? I mean, you think you think the cause I'm I'm from I'm from all right. So the Bronx drill was created around the third, right? A part of the Bronx called 183rd, right? And that's like Twin Parks area. I'm from 170, I'm from right down the block from where all that started, right? So I mean, what you think of it? You think it is it was good for hip hop or it's causing more trouble than it's worth? I think it was good. A lot of niggas eating off that shit. You feel me? I can't right, right, right. Care. I think it was good too because I think it was good. Fact, I think it was good too because the fact that you know it, it, it brought it back to New York. You feel me? Like you know, other places that had it on lock for, for a long time. The South movement, Chicago with their drill shit. You know what I'm saying? So now that you know the spotlight is, is, is being placed on New York as far as the drill shit. I feel like it's a good thing, you know what I'm saying? Just like what Kanye said, like, you know, young people are eating because of, you know, the spotlight of the drill music. People feel like, you know, the the New York drill is better than Chicago drill. That's why so much spotlight is on New York right now, you know what I mean? If people if mm. people would have thought that Chicago drill was better than New York drill, then Chicago would still have a run. But being that New York drill was so much better and impactful than Chicago drill, that's why the switch is just made over to New York, to New York like that, you feel I me? Mean? Right, right, right. But see, now you got the feds involved. You got, um, you know, they watching. You got the mayor involved. You got all these different people involved. But it's crazy because the mayor out there in Chirac, I don't know what he was doing. He wasn't on the, he wasn't trying to ban it. But now that it came to New York, it's all types of eyes on drill music now. You know, they want to ban it. They want to do this. They want to do that. People up in Hot 97 don't even want to play that no more. I mean, it's getting crazy right now, you know? Bro, you, you know you know as well as me right now, New York got all the least music music wise, right? So it was only a matter of time. Let me let me let me let me pick your brain with this, right? Drill was at Drill was at his height during the um the Blasio the Blasio's administration, right? Why why did it take black men to literally to literally now sit with drill rappers? If that was the case then why why didn't the the Blasio do that shit two, three years ago when that shit was really was really um you feel what I'm saying? Hot and shit like that. But I really took a black man to really sit down, bro. It's, 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 everything is on um, agenda, bro. Everything's agenda, bro. Man, listen, man. I feel like Listen, this. listen, I'm listen. Like, Let I'm, me talk. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I, feel, I, feel like the, I feel like the white man was definitely was in the new mayor ear. But like, yo, listen, man. Y'all stop the drill shit, man. Yo, you out of this all fucking office. 
That's what I feel about that shit, boy. Listen, niggas can't get indicted off that shit no more. Niggas is, they pushing that to be a law now, you feel me? So they trying to nip that in the bud before that even come. All of that mm. truth, everything that niggas saying in there, they about to turn that off. You feel me? You could say anything in a song now. You can't, it's not going to, like, come, t it's not going to provide evidence for any type of case or anything like that. So they trying to shut that down. You see how they call Bobby and shit? He rapped it in his song. If they, yeah. they if that would have been effective back then, Bobby would have never went to jail. Bro, bro. Yeah, you know what it is? Because they don't understand that, you know, in this rap um, in this rap thing, that people have ghost writers. It's like some of these words and some of these lyrics that people are rapping to, you know, sometimes it's not even their own. So it's like somebody else be rapping, like they writing they own, they writing they shit. So they gotta take that into consideration of why you know they gotta take the shit off the table. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. And anybody could say that somebody else wrote their music or they just performing. They only do this for music purposes only, entertainment purposes only. So now they trying to shut it down before it even hit the courts and stuff like Bro, that. Bro, let me let me say this right. As long as me and you, uh, basically all of us. And and we literally at the at the lowest of the totem pole right now, bro. We gonna be the ones affected, bro. The boys is literally gonna be be the targets, my nigga. You feel what I'm saying? Why you think? Why you think right now when them, when them two niggas got got them got them killed and um um the niggas the niggas push them niggas that's crazy, bro. All this shit is a gender, my nigga. So it's not the rappers that's about to feel it. It's the regular niggas that's gonna feel it. Trust me, bro. Watching the year, bro. Watching the mm. year, bro. I'm telling yo, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, yo, from the from the from the pandemic started, my nigga, I've been seeing agenda on on the agenda, agenda, bro. It's just that niggas been sleep. Mm. I kind of get what you're saying. So what you're saying is like it's going to come from 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 them saying they want to ban drill and this and that and all that gangster shit. It's going it's going trickle over to the streets. You're saying, come on. you know where um yeah yeah man yo that's crazy right there. You know. Come on, bro. Like, yo, think about it, bro. What, what, what the fuck, man? No, gotta, gotta do with Drew, right? What, what, five year old? Right, right, right. I see him sitting in the middle of the crowd. I'm like, huh? Yo, this just don't even look right. It, it didn't resonate with my spirit. The whole thing, you know? Right. Yeah. All these niggas was doing. All these niggas was doing. Be like, yo, bro. The um for the um Adams Adams bat me, bro. If I'm doing any type of legal shit, bro, just give me immunity. That's all. That's all I seen. It was a publicity stunt, my. That's all I seen it was a publicity set on both sides, and them niggas worked actually perfectly. Mm. Well, like, 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 it may know like the the fucking big homie of the of the, the new generation. Like, what's going on, man? Right, right, right. That's, right. That's, what looking crazy. That's what it was looking like. Like, you know, like I don't know. It looked at like slash that slash some type of manipulation going on. Yo, I don't know, but it didn't it didn't sit right with me the way it all looked. The look of the whole thing. I'm like, hold up, it's something more here that we we not seeing, you know? That's not getting talked about. It's something more to this right here, you know? I, it, it didn't resonate with my spirit, you know? <laughs> bro, bro, I'm, I'm going to leave it like this, bro. Like, for me, for me, bro, you know, like, like I said, I'm 26, bro. I could probably, I could probably see shit a, a, a mile away, but for the niggas that's 21, 22, living in the city right now, bro, they got no clue. They literally got... No clue what's going on, my nigga, and that's the worst part about this shit. Cause the niggas is still, is gonna still bake music, try to try to bring into an industry that don't even want them, and literally try to push a push a lifestyle that's not even for them, my nigga. And then who you who you think they um who you think um for the for the jails is about to be filled up by these niggas, bro. These young niggas, these these young niggas, bro. They they going they gonna come for them, bro. So I don't know, my nigga. It's just, it's just disgusting on both sides, bro. But when I seen that shit, and I, I'm pretty sure you you made this topic because of the because of the press conference, bro. When I seen that shit, right. bro, bro, Adams, my nigga, is a dirty nigga, bro. Adams, my dirty nigga, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how you think he got there? Where he's at right now? Come on, you don't get that. That's not easy to become a mayor. Come on, man. You 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 know what I mean? You got your hands in a cookie jar Whoa. some way somehow. You know. That's right. That's right. You seen the wire? Remember the wire, the HBO joint? They showed you all about politics and how that work, you know, and and, and the little shady stuff that go on with the politics, oh, you know. Come on, come on, bro. This nigga, this nigga is pushing. 
is pushing for, for Asians and Jews more than black people. But I'm not surprised, bro. From I seen Obama, from I, from I seen Obama, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't push for black people on the presidential level, bro. And I seen this nigga coming in for me. I already knew it was a matter of time. I knew it was a matter of time, bro. I didn't think it was going to be this early, but I knew it was a matter of time. Yeah, I was trying to explain to people before how they plant people there. You know, you got plants. There's people like Obama. You know, there's people that was actually put there to serve an agenda. You know what I'm saying? To stop certain things, to serve certain agendas that they got in the works for us, you know? Um, a lot of people say Mayor Eric Adams was elected, right? Yo, he could have been appointed. You know what I'm saying? He could have actually been put there for certain agendas. We don't know what yet because it's still early. We're going to wait a little while. But let's see. Let's see what happens with this dude. Because this is only the beginning when it comes to this dude. I'm telling you. Bro, yo, bro. I'm really doing the white man work right now as far as, oh, he wanted, uh, he wanted to stop the pipeline of the guns that's coming through New York and all that shit. He already doing the fucking white man work as it is. So shit, he going he gonna to bow down. He going to bow down to whatever the white man telling him to do. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he, you know, all the work that you, you, you put in ain't going to never gonna be to better us as, as a whole, as a people. Right, right, right. That's yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. These people, these people and all that, they're already not a part of us. They'll play like they say, oh, because he's black. People see us black people. We we not that smart when it comes to being strategic a little bit. You know what I mean? Because they'll say, OK, he's black like me. So now he's the man. I'm going to vote for him, this and that. Hey, yo, like I said before, a lot of these people was planted there. You know, they planted there for that same reason. They know you're going you're going to accept them because he's black. But then give it a little while, and you're going to see what the true agenda was, you know? Bro, it's, it's, chest, it's chestnut checkers, bro. That's why I mean, bro, as a as a, as an artist, bro, I look at it like this, bro. I, I make my music for, for what you call the fun, but I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to break into no type of industries, bro. I ain't trying to rub no, no, no elbows with like all these, all these de demonic people and shit like that, bro. I'm more focused on business, bro. I'm more focused on on financial empowerment, bro. If I got if I got to pop as a nigga, like. As a nigga just doing the work on the business side, bro, I'm all good. You don't got to know my face. You don't got to know my name, bro. Fact. Fact. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, which, which, whichever way, you know, whichever way could get you in. You know what I mean? Look at it like that. However you could get in somehow, you know? That's a that's a, that's a fact. Even if you see... Uh, I, even if you see... Oh, my fool. No, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, bro. No, no, I was saying last thing I was saying, like, even if, if you read 50 book, he was saying that oh nine, um, like Jimmy Alvin, like he was signed into school. Long story short, he was he was he was seeing like he how he was being pushed outside like the building and shit like that. Mind you, he sold like a million copies of the music. Long story short, he found he came to find out that the music industry wasn't even music no more. They were trying to sell an image. And that's why I was even telling a brother, like, as Queens niggas, bro, we we literally we literally think far, like father. That's why Nikki right now she's at where she's at, bro, because she's playing checkers. She's playing um chess with these niggas. She's not playing chess. You know what I'm saying, bro. So mind you, like yeah, bro. As a, as as a grown man now, I, like I look at the thing, I'm like, yo, bro, you ain't have to cause that much beef. But at the same time, at um um being 46, 47 years old, being in a better position than most of these came in with, I don't blame the nigga. I don't blame the nigga. Mm. What are you talking about? Talking about 50 Cent? Yeah. Hey, yo, 50, he said, you know, 50, when he came into the game, 50 said, yo, I'm going to get mine and all that at, by all means necessary. And that's just what he did. And now you look, if you look at him today, he don't even got to rap no more. He ain't got to be a part of the music industry or nothing. You know, he got his little shows on stars. He can live off of that. You know what I mean? He don't even got to mess with the music. Right. So what? That could that could be what? Is that the goal? The goal, you might come in as a rapper, but at the end, you might end off doing something else. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's the better goal. Because at the end of the day, when you become a rapper, you sign to a label. You know, so you're not your own boss. You know what I'm saying? You got like 30 different people getting paid off for of your one album. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's the route that you want to stay in. That's the career you want to choose. Now, it's, it's, it's a way, you know, it's a way to, you know, you get your feet in the door and all of that, make your little money from it. But I don't think you should stay in it. I think you should take that money and do something else, you know? Yeah, but I think that the route that people sign to labels is because 
they could be able to get like a, another situation after the on um, the rap music. So you know that that's a good way to like. Right, get that's in. what I'm like, saying. You, want, you know, so getting you know getting signed to a label, it actually couldn't be a good thing. You know what I mean? Even they even they do a three sixty deal or they give you like twenty thousand or thirty thousand or whatever they give you. You know, you gotta be able to use utilize that to make it a better situation for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Cause you know, you start off. You know, we be in the hood. You know, we might we might be all from the projects or whatever. We in the projects writing our little rhymes. You know, we outside getting our little hustle on to get the money up to the studio time for features and this and that, right? So a label come and present you a deal. You go take that deal, right? And you gonna be all right. So it's not all bad because you take that deal. They could even be jerking you, but guess what? It's getting wow. you out the hood, right? Wow. right? It's keeping you busy. Number two, it's keeping you busy, right? You know what I'm saying? And it's a future, is a future in it, even if you are getting jerked. Because remember, your name is still getting out there, whether they jerking you or not. Right. But you could use your name and your stardom to do something else. You know what I'm saying? Right. Look at look at the look at the locks. They first album on Bad Boy, they said they felt like they was getting jerked and all that. But it, it don't matter at this point. Because even back then, we knew that these dudes was great rappers. So they could take that great rapper status, right? It don't mean money. It just means a great rapper. So take that great rapper status and use use it for something else. And that's j exactly what they did. And now they are who they are today. You know? Twin, here's, here's the thing with it, bro. My respect for y'all generation, those 35, 45, at least y'all, at least y'all, y'all knew like, yo, bro, my situation crazy right now. Yeah, I'm getting drunk right now, but I, I see a future. Like I said again, these niggas right now, in my generation right now, is looking at it like, yo, my nigga, I, right, I got five hundred thousand, bro. I'm about to give all the bros, et cetera, et cetera. I'm about to get a gun. I'm about to get this. I'm about to get that. Next thing you know, bro, I'm left with like ten thousand, five thousand, and now I got it. Now I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta rob a nigga. I gotta, I gotta live like I'm really like that, bro. Now it's just right. like, yo. It's just like, yo, bro, you literally was just working backwards, my nigga. You you literally ran the whole marathon. And all of a sudden now you don't want the medal no more. Like, yo, fuck the medal, bro. Fuck the race. Come right. on. And that's why Master P, you see what Master P was doing, right? That's why Master P said there needs to be a union, right? A pension, like a union for rappers. For rappers who once rap, you know, you get down to that last money. You know, they got to be a union, something to protect you from going broke. A pension. That's why Master P was trying to start that, but they ain't gonna let him start that. I mean, they ain't gonna I mean, let him. They ain't gonna let everybody idea, touch for themselves. But at the same time, we shouldn't hold. We shouldn't feel sorry for the rapper that's spending all their freaking money. You know what I'm saying? Like you should right. have been a better, smart businessman, or you know, you should have. You know, and yo, I, I, I always say, your money. I, I, I always say, I said, yo, I ain't got no sympathy for rappers who once had it, for movie stars who once had it for athletes that once had it because y'all had the bag already now what y'all did with it that's y'all choice what y'all chose to do with uh -huh. it if y'all chose to do the wrong thing with it that's on you but y'all had it y'all had it so you could never uh -huh. ever you know what i mean you could never ever say like yo i didn't you had it you you you, you did the wrong thing with it you know you had two hundred thousand dollars right in your account and you got a hundred thousand dollar chain that ain't smart Definitely you know that ain't smart. smart at all i feel like this man yeah like it's only one chance in your whole entire life for you to get the big bag. Like once you have like seventy million, eighty million, a hundred million, whatever the case may be, like you're supposed to be able to hold on to that. Don't do it like MC Hammer did. Don't do it like fucking Scott Storch did. You feel me? All these freaking right. entertainer that had the big bag. And guess what? Where they at right now? They can't get that big bag what what they once had before. So you gotta be able to be smart once you have the big bag. You feel me? You can't be done right. like what you said, buy the big jewelry, and you only got like $500,000 in the account, you buy $100,000 in jewelry. Like, who who does that? Like, you got to be right. really much smarter than that, you know what I mean? So that's why I don't feel sorry for some of these rappers that, that, that went broke. Like, you're supposed, to do, you're supposed to do something smart with that money, you feel me? You know, why would right. I have a union for, for you guys? You feel me? Right. Like, like, I could tell on, you man. times of... I could even talk about me. I could tell you times where I made a thousand dollars work back in the days. Yo, I held on to that thousand for dead life. I probably held on to that thousand for at least like ten years. You understand what I'm saying? And this is mind you. This is only this is only a thousand dollars, and I made that work for me. And this is years ago. You understand what I'm saying? So I I definitely ain't got no sympathy for nobody that done seen a million. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And blew that. <laughs> you know? Wow. <laughs> for real. Them blue. 
fifty million dollars. <laughs> that shit is crazy, bro. Like that's a that's a that's a big freaking bag, especially in those times. Like who who, who blew fifty million? MC Hammer. He blew fifty million dollars, boy. Look at look at Tyson. Four hundred four hundred million. Four hundred million. That is that's insane, bro. Yep. It could be done, yeah, you know. Yeah. These dudes is putting stuff up their nose and all that, you know. Right. They buying everybody, you know. They they looking out for everybody, you know. That that four hundred million, that should have been flipped fifty times, man. For real, for real, shit. But but all, all now I'm saying is like, even you get a lot of money, twenty thousand, twenty, thirty thousand, whatever the case may be, utilize that money to 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 make a flip. Don't go blow it on. Things where you can't even see no money out of it after you you, you don't blow it. You feel me? Don't go and buy no twenty thousand dollar jewelry, and you know you can't get freaking ten ten thousand after you pawn this shit. You feel me? Right. So like with that it, little bit of money, it, you gotta invest. It's like Prosper was saying. Prosper, he said he's twenty six and all that, right? So you know, just imagine, just imagine being twenty two with like a million dollars and all that. Come on, man. You right. know, you got to have guidance. That's the part we leaving out. You got to have guidance. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. Niggas don't got that. It, it, yeah, niggas don't, niggas. <laughs> Yo, it's sad, bro. It's sad, bro. It, it's sad, bro. You feel me? Just, 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 just want some shit, bro, where, like, Mind you, bro. Like I grew up in, a, I grew up in like a um, household, bro. So like I could, I could only imagine niggas like growing up in the peas and shit like that, having that money, blowing that shit, bro, and like literally got to go back to that situation or go to jail, my nigga, on some just wicked shit. Like yo, my nigga, like for real. Like yes, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And yo, I, you know, I mean, I pray for like all of this for the music, for the rap, and all that. I don't want to see rap get banned. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to see everybody getting picked up right. on the streets for all of this. You know? I don't want to see no indictments behind no drill, behind no music. You know what I'm saying? They they can't, you know what I mean? We got to preserve the culture. They, you can't let them take the culture, you know? So in the, 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 for real. the culture, already, culture already gone, my brother. The, the culture been gone from the 90s, bro. Public enemy was public enemy was the, was was the last of the last coming from New York at at, at least. You feel what I'm saying? I probably put Nas in there, but besides that, bro, shit shit been going from the nineties, bro. Nas, yeah. And it, I got a guy and and I watched it. Yeah. I watched the transition because we had public enemy, right? We had public enemy fight the power. They were speaking a lot of like you know the conscious community stuff, a lot of consciousness, right? And then I watched it turn from that to cloth talk. Where everybody was rapping about like diamonds and Versace and this brand and that brand. You know what I mean? Like I watched it like all end right in front of my eyes. It went from you having to have like skill, have to actually be a person that's able to rap, to be a person that's only just able to make a good hook, have a good beat behind you, and then you taking off, you know? I watched right. the whole thing. Right. Yeah, question. So question, like, who started like that cloth talk type of music that Lavish lifestyle type of music. Who started that? Um, damn. To, to say who started that cloth talk, I mean, damn, man. It, you know, it was so many people doing it back then on the mixtapes and all that. When they back when they had the cassette tapes, the mixtapes, it was a lot of people rapping that, you know. But um, I, I believe I'm gonna say I'm gonna say who made it like viral. I'm gonna say Biggie. I'm gonna say Biggie. When Biggie was on that Ready to Die album, he was talking about the Versace and all that. Now, mind you, there was people before Biggie that was rapping about it, but we never heard these people because it was only on the mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? So we never really heard these people. It was only on the mixtapes, but um, I'm going to say it went viral with Biggie. Right. Because I feel like that kind of like overshadowed yeah. like, you know, the conscious music. You feel I me? Mean? Because like ever since like Biggie, uh, like, all right, all right, just say Biggie, but you know who who kept it going? I say like Jay Z. Jay Z, the one that probably like kept the kept kept it going. You feel me? Yeah, because then you went from Biggie, right, and then you went boom, then it went straight into the Jay Z time, the Jay Z era, and that was the end of it. Boom, it was strictly all about diamonds and you know and 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 and, and foreign cars and all. It was over. That was it. You know, dudes right. then took off them beads, them big African beads. Dudes was wearing back in the early nineties. It was over for that. You know what I'm saying? It was it was the end of it, you know? Right. At what point did like gangster music became involved? Like, 
I'm not saying like the cool G rap, but I'm talking about like more like the the ninety, like late ninety two thousand, like because like they like like when I was growing up in music and stuff like that, it wasn't that much of a hardcore record until well, I feel like maybe like DMX, you feel I me? Mean? Right, right, right. But like you just said, you you said cool G rap just now. You got to remember. Cool G rap, he was rapping about all that fly, lavish lifestyle too. But remember, it wasn't viral and all that yet. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't every, you know, every, it wasn't on the radios and all that like that. Like the radio station, like the way Biggie was, you know? So it's other people that could be credited from for that, but you can't give them that much credit because only a few people heard it, you know? Right, right, right. right. Yeah, man, it's crazy, you know? But um, I watched the whole thing. You know, I was born in 81. I was born in 1981. So I seen the whole thing happen right in front of my face. I actually seen people in real time, like, break dancing out here. All this, you know, <laughs> shit that child would probably laugh at and be like, it's goofy today. But it wasn't goofy then. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was a new thing. It was the culture. You know, it was a new thing starting called hip hop. You know, so it was it was ill. I ain't gonna hold you. It was ill back then to see all that, but um, to see where it went from there to where it's at today, yo, I'm telling you, this shit is crazy. <laughs> oh man, right. bro. Yo, what you think gonna be like the new sound of New York that, that's coming since like you know the drill, and then they trying to put a stop to the drill. Nah, I, I believe it's just, it's gonna be a mixture. It's going to be that same type of sound, what they call the drill. It's going to be that same type of sound. And I believe we also going to have the organic, like the, like you see the dudes upstate, um, the Griselda dudes and them type of people. We're going to have that organic hip hop sound. And we also going to have like that drill sound. I think it's just going to be a mixture. You're going to get both, you know, right. take, take your choice of like what you want to listen to. But we, you're going to have both. You know, I believe that. Right. But here's my thing. Here's my thing that really messed me up. Right. It's that. Like, we say that about New York, but, like, if you go to the West right now, right, even present day right now, the West still got its, um, still got its, like, still got its base that you would, you would, you would have, you would have heard from the 90s, from the 80s. I ain't talking about content-wise. I'm talking about production. Right. I'm talking about just that, that overall, of, uh, that shit hasn't changed, bro. I could still, I could put, I could put on YG, Kendrick, anybody, bro, and I still feel that Cali vibe that I was hearing from 90s, 80s. New, for for um for like like here, bro, it's just different, my nigga. I, bro, these niggas sound like they're from the south, bro. Fact, <laughs> fact. It's true. You do got that. Uh, as far as like when you go to the West Coast, they still kind of kept their that same old classic vintage West Coast sound. You know, you even hear it in the Kendrick Lamar music. You hear it in some of Game's music. You know, they got that that same style, that same classic yeah, yeah, style. Yeah, but you know, so crazy, like. Those artists that uh like you know the West Coast sound and stuff like that, not everybody in the West Coast could could really rock with that sound. That's why it's only a, a few West Coast artists that actually made it big. You feel me? Like gang, right. gang don't sound like no West Coast artists. You feel me? Kendrick Lamar, like his his sound and his music, like majority of his music don't even sound like no West Coast music. You feel me? That's why they 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 the one that able to like pretty much make it. He, 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 like he, um, even um, what's the name? Draco the Ruler. I don't know you guys heard of his music, but he don't even sound like a West Coast artist. So like those that's over there on that side, like for them to make it, you can't even sound like a West Coast artist. You feel me? But having the music, let alone you could have a little bit, but too much of that could kind of like you know look at you like nah, like nigga don't really fuck with your music because that West Coast sound like people don't, everybody don't really rock with that sound like that. Hey, yo, Uncle Murder says something that stuck with me. You know, he said, yo, you go to ATL, it sound like you in ATL. You hear that, you turn on the radio station, you hear the ATL music. He said, but when you come to New York, you sound like you in ATL all over again. Because, because the radios, the radio DJs, they don't support organic New York music here. You know what I'm saying? They don't support it. So when you come here, you sound like you in ATL, you sound like you somewhere else, you in another state. And it's a fact, because when I was growing up, you didn't hear this this type of sound. You know, you heard, you had DJs that only played organic New York music. You had um Stretch, Stretch Armstrong, you know what I'm saying? You had DJ Clue, when he was on his, you know, his classic, classic, you know, classic New York sound. 
Like you didn't hear. It actually sounded like you. Yo, listen. If you would have came here in the nineties and you turned on a radio station, you knew you was in New York. You like, yo, okay, I'm in New York. You know, you might hear something, a Nas freestyle that you ain't going to hear nowhere else on the radio station, all that. You knew you was in New York. But nowadays, you sound like you in ATL. You close your eyes and all that. And when you're sitting in the passenger seat of the car, you're going to feel like you're somewhere else, you know, now. You know, things definitely change. Yeah, that's a, that's a fact. Even, even, even like I said, even when I try to, like, even when I try to, like, spit balls. Real, like, and I'll, I'll, mind you, here's my thing with it, right? You don't gotta sound like you from the 90s, you don't gotta sound like you from the 2000s, bro. But it's just like, yo, my nigga, like, niggas is not even, bro, niggas not even embracing where they come from. And it's like, I bet, yeah, cool. We all, we all on stolen land and shit like that. So I'm glad, like, niggas on, niggas in the South, niggas in the South is getting they shine. Niggas, my niggas from Detroit getting they shine. Because for me personally, like all this divide should have been happening. Like black music is black music, bro. We still on stolen land, but at the same time, my nigga, like yo, this is your this is your environment. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of take pride in that. Like kind of kind of take pride in like yo, bro. I came from this, bro. Let me let me introduce it to the world, just like these niggas from Atlanta is doing. You feel what I'm saying? This is not right. what happened. It's like it's like yo, bro. You you spent balls, niggas is shunning you. Or, or 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 you try to you try to kind of bring back like a little essence. Niggas like yo, turn that shit off. Stop spending that shit. You feel what I'm saying? That's the shit that's like killing niggas for real, bro. Right, right, right. Well, that's what that's what I was that's what I was saying. That um, the support you're not getting the support that that you know the New Yorkers is not supporting New Yorkers. They don't even want to hear the organic regular boom back. You know, with the bars, and they don't want to hear that, man. You know, they want to hear like a, a, a beat that's going to have you jumping up and down in the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's there's no support no more, and that's why we at where we at right now. You know, they we we lost it. I'm gonna keep it official with y'all. We lost our identity. You know, we lost our identity completely. You know. Yeah, we did. But you know, the Griselda boy, they trying to bring that shit back. You heard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know that's upstate though. They, they they all the way upstate. Shout out to them and all of that. They all the way upstate. But um, you know, I mean, this this the town right here. This you know, I mean, the five boroughs and all that. Bro, this the town, you know. Bro, I'm gonna put it like. Bro, I'm gonna put it like this, right? Only nigga that only nigga that I feel like that's really that 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 nigga should kind of like model off of, like not copy. Model offer is 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 um is East Davey. You feel what I'm saying? Because this nigga could literally spit balls, hop on any type of beat, and still sound like he's from New York. But you know what's funny about it, bro? So I've been in like many studios, many studios. Long story short, I ran into like one of the engineers when and like he did like comma one, comma two. That nigga don't fuck with Davey. I'm like, yo, bro, you was in the studio with this nigga, and like he was like, yo, he not even hating on nigga, but he's like, yo, bro, like. For real, bro, like, I don't really fuck with his music. Niggas find Davies boring. So I'm like, yo, bro, Davies telling a nigga like that. If y'all find this nigga boring, there's no hope. You feel right? right <laughs> fact, fact. Right. If you find Stu Davies is nice. But if you find an artist like Davies boring, then, yo, where we going Where we gonna go from here? You know what I'm saying? Where we going from here? Yeah, uh, I do. I do kind of find him boring, too. I ain't going to lie. See? There you go. Boy, you, you know? know? You're hearing it from the horse's mouth. Crazy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Mathematics entertain the truth history.